So it was two things. A lot of my friends I grew up with, they're actually currently incarcerated. Mm-hmm. And when you know somebody personally, you know they're not bad people. Yeah. You know, you know they, some people make mistakes. Right. It could have been easily one of us that made a mistake mm-hmm. that landed us in, you know, with a felony. So right. So some of them, you know, so it could be anybody, honestly. Mm-hmm. That's how I look at it. Mm-hmm. And um, I just want to give them a second chance because, like you said, these guys aren't bad guys. You know your brother's a bad guy. Mm-hmm. And somebody has to look out. Somebody has to help. Somebody has to give these people an opportunity. Yeah. Because some of them, they're very creative. They're very good people. They're very talented people. Mm-hmm. And it's like, if you close every door, they have no choice but to go back to probably what got them in exactly. prison to begin with. That's very true. That's very true. And I, I actually was thinking about, you know, when you mentioned the location of your restaurant, we see so many, so much crime happening. And right. a lot of that is because there's not programs in place and the ages are younger and younger i mean i don't know any person that hasn't made a mistake you know as 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 in their youth right but but if you're not given an opportunity to write that exactly you know so with me being a buckhead right now there's a lot of crime the crime is rising Mm -hmm. and i was like what can i do to actually help the community yeah and like i said a lot of these guys are coming home with no choice but to commit crime or you know, do whatever they, they got to do to make a couple of dollars because they came more to nobody. Yeah. Like uh, one of our first contestants that won the actual competition. Mm-hmm. Well, let's talk about the competition. How does it, how does it work? Because I love, I, it was very innovative to use that like Shark Tank model. Right. So talk about how the process of, of the competition. So originally, I, I went to Howard University for business. Okay. All right. And, um, in the house. Yeah. And I learned a lot, <laughs> lot of business strategies, business marketing, so how to write a business plan. Mm-hmm. So... When um after the success of the boiler, you know, I was talking to a lot of people. I was like, "There's like, you know, how do you want to give back? back? Do you want to do like school giveaways and mm-hmm, stuff like that?" Mm-hmm. I said, "Nah, that's back not to what, school backpacks." Right. <laughs> I was like, "That's not what hit home to me." Right. Let's go inside these prisons and try to talk to these guys. So uh, I teamed up with Aces. It was mm-hmm. a, a program inside the reentry facilities. Okay. And I came as a guest speaker, but the guys are so interested in the business. I was like, "What can I do to help?" Them? Yeah. So I was like, how about this? How about I give y'all like a business pitch competition? Mm-hmm. I'll come in here for 13 weeks, teach y'all about business, teach y'all how to write a business plan. And from there, whoever presents the best business plan, I'll give you startup funds. Wow. And uh, originally it was 14 guys. By the time it ended 13 weeks, we ended up having nine uh, contestants. Okay. And they stuck with the program. Now, which prison, where, where were you at? It's called Metro Reentry. Okay. So it was a reentry prison were pretty much guys that did like 10 years 15 years mm. they're trying to help them get back you started um it was a shark tank startup type program for um convicted felons or or yes. pe- people that have been to prison that have a record that that need a second chance at life and i i mentioned that really resonated with me when i when i got the information because i have a brother that went to prison when he was 16 years old and i can remember once he got out, he went for four years. We didn't have money for, you know, a lawyer or anything right. like that. So he had a public defender. My mom had no idea what to do. When he got out, he got a job. And that job was doing maintenance for a university. It was great. Like, we were like, oh, my God, he's ex- I'm excited. He got his life back together. And when the people found out, he, had not, he was not honest on his application. application. So they found out that he was a convicted felon. And, again, this happened when he was 16 years old. Um, he's in his early 20s at this point and he, they, they let him go and they humiliated him and I remember the guys I tried to go big sister tried to go in and um, and plead on his behalf because he was doing great work they loved him right. but the, uh, the his his boss I remember him looking at me and he said your brother will never do anything he's a convicted felon and I said no he paid his debt you know he's doing and, and the guy said he's always a convicted felon and that broke me down even and I and he it it definitely did something to my brother's self-esteem but it also discouraged me because I was trying to help him so the program that you have um that's that was my personal connection to why it was so important so what was the motivation for you very devastating news a beloved Atlanta business owner was underlived in the old fourth ward neighborhood that was on Tuesday afternoon according to his irony the Atlanta police uh, said they responded to a person who was 
was actually analyzed at 48 or John Wesley Dobbs Avenue, northeast near the Martin Luther King Jr. Road, the National Historical Park, just before 3.50 p.m. Police said a 33-year-old man who they have not publicly identified had apparently you know wounds and was in critical condition before he actually passed on chad dillon uh, was identified by his attorney malcolm connor as the man who was unalived according to connor dillon was 33 and he was unalived near a new jamaican restaurant he was planning to open soon it takes me to actually uh, what i was uh, what i really wanted to comment about this whole incident this is a man who actually had helped his community he had given back money he had helped um guys who had been convicted as felons you know to get a second chance in life but to see him being treated in such a way it teaches us huge and big big lessons you know as we blacks because this is a man who actually had donated fifteen thousand dollars you know to ex offenders to help them create their own businesses and of course he had spent close to 13 weeks teaching them on social media business skills so they would be successful but see how he has been paid back by his own community you know it's really very heartbreaking it's really very saddening you know to see that man chad dylan actually has lost his life in such a very um very horrible way there is always an element of jealous there is always that element of not wishing um, any successful black guy you know to thrive within his community we've seen this so many times a uh, case in point a young Dolph was also treated in such a way you know he had given back to the community he was you know doing lots of work to his community but see how he was repaid back man it's really very heartbreaking Chad was a very successful young businessman a black young businessman you know raising through different ranks uh, providing employment to so many people you know helping his community but see how he has been repaid back man it's really very saddening very heartbreaking and i'm really sorry for his family friends uh, family uh, because it's such a very bad tragedy rest in power the king Ch